What's going on guys, my name is RBG and I'm bringing you my breakdown on the latest Bumblebee movie trailer. And man do we have a lot to process. I gotta admit that I saw a snippet of the teaser a day prior to the official trailer so I knew what I was in store for, but this trailer still blew my goddamn mind. If you've been itching for a Transformer film that shows respect to the series you grew up with, this movie looks like it's gonna do that and then some. And if you loved the first film and wish there was another film that recaptured that same vibe, it looks like this movie will deliver that blockbuster feel. Except it won't be a summer blockbuster, it'll be a holiday blockbuster. And that kinda has me worried because December is gonna be packed to the brim with huge film franchises. You have movies like Aquaman and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, two highly anticipated films that I'm sure are gonna rack in a ton of cash. Thankfully, Bumblebee's movie comes out after both, and even if it doesn't hit a billion dollars like TF3 and 4, it won't necessarily be a loss because this movie is said to have the cheapest budget out of all the Transformers flicks. That's why Paramount doesn't really want to go big. As I mentioned in the last video, the CG designs are going to be dialed down compared to the Bay films. You have to totally respect what's been created and you can't, you know, deviate. And I knew if I were to put these characters in the real world, they'd have to fit in the real world and they have to be much more intricate. On Cybertron, I mean, they all walked around like with truck parts, you know, transformed, and that just doesn't fly when you're trying to at least make it credible for someone who's never seen Transformers. Like, I think he got himself too caught up in making sure the Transformers fit within a realistic setting, and the CG models were very costly with each robot averaging around 5,000 parts each. Like, the guns and Ironhide CGI model alone had over 10,000 pieces each, which is most likely why they dissed him in Transformers 3. It just became too expensive. I actually wanted more robots than we had, but it just ultimately got too expensive. But anyways, we finally have more Autobots and Decepticons confirmed for this movie. One of the more obvious ones being Optimus Prime. We pretty much knew that he was going to be in the movie since Peter Cullen confirmed this a while back. You see B receiving a message from Optimus through some kind of holographic transponder in his chest. I pray this message finds you. Our war rages on. Must protect Earth and its people. This kind of feels like a callback to the first film where we saw him sending a beacon to the Autobots. But you'll notice that Optimus Prime's model looks very similar to his original G1 design with a little bit of that Bay aesthetic. If you remember back in Age of Extinction, he had an evasion mode that looked damn near identical to this one. Same generation build, just wore down and discolored, so you can tell that this film is acknowledging the events of the earlier entries. You still have Sector 7 as the central human antagonist, and the director dropped a huge bombshell that disappointed fans. He confirmed that the F-4 Phantom Jet we saw in the reveal trailer wasn't Starscream like we thought it was. It's actually Blitzwing. His explanation was that we already know what Starscream looked like in the previous films and that it would sort of screw with the continuity. Which I have to admit I feel like it's a stupid excuse given that this movie seems to have canonical errors already. Like why does B come to Earth in the mid to late 80s in this film if he was said to already be on Earth during World War II in the last night? So I didn't buy into Travis Knight's explanation whatsoever. It felt like he was swerving us so we would be surprised when we saw the actual film. But lo and behold I can say that it looks like he might be telling the truth. And I'm not mad at all. Because as you can see there looks to be a variety of Decepticon Seekers. Some of which just so happen to be triple changes called Shatter and Dropkick. A couple months ago we had gotten images of these Decepticons but we weren't certain what their abilities would be. The only thing that we knew is that the red bot Shatter would transform into a Plymouth Satellite and Dropkick would transform into a blue AMC Javelin. But now it looks like they will possess two alt modes, Shatter's being a Harrier Jump Jet and Dropkick's a Bell AH-1 Super Cobra Helicopter. I had a nagging suspicion that these guys were triple changers because of the rather peculiar blade Shatter has on her right shoulder. That's right, I said her as in she. A female Decepticon being voiced by Angela Bassett. She has a very imposing yet menacing personality and it looks like she's going to be manipulating armed forces to help her find Bumblebee. There's a war raging on our planet. If this criminal isn't found, that war may find its way here. It seems like she's the first to encounter Sector 7 and has somewhat formed an alliance with them. And I just love her and Dropkick's design. 
They both look like they're going to be more agile as opposed to the fumbling and animalistic Decepticons we've seen in the Bay films. It's almost like this movie is doing what the others failed to do, which is give all of the Decepticons personality instead of having a select few who do all the talking. I also like how the story is being structured. We have this small scout Autobot being hunted by actual seekers. Aerial bots who specialize in actually seeking out their target. It looks like B was sent off a Cybertron with something that the Decepticons really want. As you can tell by this clip, we got a Blitzwing interrogating him. Where's Optimus Prime? So he's gonna be the main seeker. Like I mentioned earlier, I know fans are disappointed that he isn't Starscream, but I have a nagging suspicion that we'll see his original G1 form. Like he could possibly scan a tank to go with his jet mode, because that seems to be the case with Shatter and Dropkick. Like they had to have at least scanned cars to get their other alt modes. And as you can see, Blitzwing is already a jet on the scene we have of Cybertron, which has all the fans hyped. We had heard that we would get a brief moment of the movie on the Transformers home planet, but we weren't expecting something this grand in scale. The first thing that caught our attention is obviously Shockwave. He looks like he was ripped right out of the G1 show in IDW comics. Totally different from his more aggressive looking Dark of the Moon. I have a feeling he's going to be calling most of the shots while Megatron is operating elsewhere. Like I'm assuming Megatron is already encased in ice like he was in Transformers 1. If you notice, there's this brief shot of Sector 7 coming out of the Hoover Dam. That was where they were secretly hiding Megatron and using him for experiments. But as you can see, Shockwave has his seekers ready to hunt down Bumblebee. Their jet forms are basically interstellar, so they're going to have the best chance of traveling out to other planets to retrieve Bumblebee. You notice what looks like Shatter standing to the far left and Blitzwing to Shockwave's right. A purple looking seeker who could possibly be Skywarp, and they even have a conehead seeker who could be either Thrust, Dirge, or Ramjet. Those were particular seekers who came in later by the second season in the cartoons. Like I'm not sure who that green one is. They might just slap a name on him to avoid copyrights. Because some of these names are no longer owned by Hasbro. But anyways, we see Optimus observing as three seekers go after Bumblebee's space pod. Followed by another awesome reveal of a more G1 accurate version of Soundwave as he ejects out Ravage. Two returning robots. Now I'm not gonna lie, the CGI does look like a video game cutscene from Fall of Cybertron, but I guess it's understandable considering this is a cheaper budget compared to the rest. And I can imagine that it's still in post-production, so it'll most likely look better by the time it hits theaters. I have a feeling that most of the characters we see on Cybertron could have their own future spin-offs if this film does good at the box office. I'm really interested in seeing a fully cinematic version of Cybertron. The world looks recognizable yet foreign compared to the other films that featured this weird spiky design with these hexagonal patterns. This version of Cybertron looks like it's been going through the Great War for a while and Bees their last hope. I'm kinda curious to see if they'll actually explain what happened to Bees voice box since this is an origin tale. I mean we already know that it was Megatron who destroyed it but it would add a level of emotion to see it play out on screen. B already has this traumatized look like he can't trust anyone but he finds a companion in Haley Steinfeld's character, Charlie. She's gonna be the one to get him out of that fearful state and motivate him to fight back against Sector 7 and the Decepticons. I really like how this isn't the overconfident B we've seen over the past 11 years in the Bay films. He looks like a very naive child who we'll see actually get character development. We see him being very reluctant to engage in combat with Sector 7 soldiers because he might not want to hurt them. But when they hurt his friend, he turns into a complete and total badass. Get down! My back, me. The mask is on and the kid gloves are off. It shows that this film may be all cutesy and family fun, but the action you love from the earlier Transformers films is still there in full effect. You see B in his high speed chase with a police car which I'm assuming to be his longtime movie rival Barricade. And there's this awesome scene where he's fighting off Dropkick to save Charlie. You can actually see the action as opposed to trying to figure out which part is which with all the robots. And none of them are disproportionate. Now I know there have been a few complaints about Bumblebee's overall head design since it lacks the signature horns, but if you notice when he slides on his battle mask, they're right there. If you look closely, Travis Knight looks like he modeled B's mask after the original Micro Changer toy from the early 80s. I don't know if I'm reaching with that, but it looks like it. Like I could go on and on about how great this film looks, but I want to hear your thoughts. 
Has this trailer motivated you to get reinvested into the TF movie franchise? And do you think it would do well in the box office with all the competition? Let me know down in the comment section below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future content. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it on social media outlets with all your friends and followers. But this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I will catch you guys later. Peace out. Yeah!